joined by interim All Whites head coach Dan Bracey and midfielder Matt Garbett uh, following our 2 1 win over China at Sky Stadium. Uh, Darren, how did you feel about today's performance? No, I feel very proud. Uh, I thought it was a really strong performance. Again, a lot of good possession, and, and the team we put out was a very attack minded team. Um, and, and we had some really good patterns and really good moments of you know, connection and interchange and created some good chances. And, you know, as the game went on, uh, the players are aware of the, the goal scoring thing, you know, and, um, and then we get the penalty and, and obviously we're all expecting to break the drought then. And, and you know what? Penalty takers miss penalties. So no one ever blames people then, but you're starting to think, oh, really? But, you know, we kept at it and we kept piling the pressure on and, and, and keeping to trying to play the right way. And, you know, we get our rewards with a, like a, a weird goal. Um, I think it was an own goal in the end. So, but, no, we deserved that. Um, and then, obviously, Matt, Matt, you know, the second half, Matt comes on and, and scores a great goal. And that's the moment I think everybody released and celebrated. So that was, that was an awesome moment for Matt, but not just for Matt, but for, I think, the whole team, you know, the whole bench erupted. Because I think that was the moment they knew, oh, we scored a proper goal. And, uh, and now we've got a real chance of winning this game and cap off a, a really good a good week together. Um, a couple of good performances. So, no, I'm really proud of the boys. And, and again, just the, the energy and the um, enthusiasm that everybody put into the game. You know, we've got players that have travelled halfway around the world, played, you know, over a short period, played two games, and we've got people at the end that are, you know, cramping up and they're still pressing, still pressing, still being aggressive, still hunting we call it hunting going after them trying to win the ball back and make sure they don't get easy possession um, and we did that the whole game um, so now I was, I'm not even going to talk about the last goal and then Matt how did it feel to score at home in Wellington yeah obviously it's you know extra special for me because um, I'm from here and um, to do it in front of mates family um, to come home even in front of um, where I came from you know Olay you know to do it in front of those kids you know I saw them afterwards and um you know, just the, the words and everything they were saying, you know, it was good to do in front of them. And um, yeah, obviously a bit gutted didn't start, but um, my job was to come on and, and make an impact. So I um, um, thought I did that, so yeah. Was that a moment you dreamed of scoring in Wellington? Oh, I think it's actually probably my first proper game at, at, at um, Sky Stadium. Um, I think I've done a friendly, but um, yeah, to score in front of all friends, family, even just people I know in Wellington, um, you know, couldn't ask for more. Coach, how bad was that penalty? <laughs> it was a shocker, wasn't it? Ah, it didn't go in. <laughs> so, yeah, like I say, taking penalties is um, it's pretty nerve-wracking. You know, some people love it and some people hate it. You know, and I'm talking about professional footballers around the world. It's not everyone's cup of tea. So when somebody steps up and has the courage to do that, you know, yeah, and when they, when they miss it, obviously it's um, not nice for them. But, yeah, what do you do? <laughs> I was thinking, ah. Oh. Yeah. Here we go, but now the boys really turned it around and just kept playing and kept probing and you know just kept to the game plan and obviously you know we end up scoring two goals which was awesome. Was there a fight for who was going to take the penalty or knowing that there was that goal drought? Was there a bit of hesitation to you all said no? How people reacted? Yeah, we did actually a penalty shootout um, the day before and you know Greaves actually did score to be fair yesterday. Um, but yeah, there was a couple that, that stepped up before in the change room. Um, there was a few words even from the coaches. Um, but yeah, to, to if it feels confident, you know, if someone's going to step up, it happens, you know. Um, so it is what it is. Now you're the last player to score for the All Whites, obviously, nearly a year ago. Much as, you know, you say performance, the goals will come. Was it starting to weigh on the players' minds that it had been so long since you'd scored a goal? Well, you know, we, we, we're always creating chances in these games. Um, you look at six games ago, we had so many chances in every game. I, last game, should have scored or even squared it. Um, so the chances are there. It was just more just getting it in the net, which is the hardest thing to do. Um, so, um, yeah, it's more just the confidence building. And, you know, we know we can score goals because regardless, you know, we're doing it in training. We're scoring some good goals. Um, obviously, training's not, it's not games, but... Um, you know, we know the chances are there, and at the end of the day, it's just putting it in the back of the net. Um, um, and obviously, Woods is probably the best at that. Um, so it wasn't great not having him, but there's chances and there's opportunities for other players, and, and you know, we can score, so it's there. And you mentioned um, that you were disappointed not to start, but I guess, you know, not everybody can start a game. And, and you seem to use disappointment as a bit of a motivator. I mean, the, the Olympics, you weren't even in the squad originally, and then all of a sudden, you're in the team and you start. How, how do you... Um, 
is that a, something you take pride in, an internal drive to use disappointment as motivation? Yeah, well, personally, I would say I'm not great at hiding emotions. Um, coaches probably know that as well. <laughs> so even in training yesterday, I was, you know, not great hiding it. And I did, I, what I do is do show it on the training pitch and in the, in the game. So, um, you know, coming on, you know, obviously disappointed, but knew what I had to do. And um, that was my job today. And, you know, I came on and coaches said, you know, you're going to be coming on. So just be ready. And I thought I was ready. I prepared well. So, um, yeah. We, we, we call it highly competitive. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to follow up. I mean, is that the kind of attitude you like to hear? In that you know, players are gutted when they're not involved. One hundred percent. You know, we've got a good squad, and everybody wants to start, and everybody wants to play, and and that's the difficulty. Um, I think we've got a lot of understanding within the squad that you know, there's two games, and there are going to be some changes. But yeah, I mean, uh, Matt is highly competitive and wants to play every minute of every game, uh, and we've got other players that. That as well, you know, and we've got a couple of players in the squad that you know haven't played minutes in this tour, which is potentially disappointing for them because everybody, as a footballer, wants to play. You know, I was so pleased that Kyle Adams, we got Kyle Adams on, you know, because he sat um, on the bench for the two Australia games, sat on the bench in Auckland, and then we get him on, and, you know, at the end of this game, and he and now he's an All White, you know, and made his debut, so that's awesome for him again. You know, um, and another Olay player that's here with people here, so it's really, really pleased for him. But you know, there's other players. You know that Cam Howison and that, and, and obviously Steph, you know Declan Wynn that haven't haven't got on the pitch, and that's the difficulty of of having a good squad. Um, everybody wants to play, but we do need players to react the right way and come on and and show us why they should have started. <laughs> but I'll say, well, that's why you were coming on to do that at that time. <laughs> so no, no it was, yeah, things. Did it, did it feel like just playing with your mates again? Because um, even with the starting eleven. <coughs> Well, you know what it is. It all comes from the style of play that the, the coaches put in because it's the style of play that we all love to play um, and suits us best, you know. It's, it's so enjoyable playing this kind of football. Um, obviously, there's a, maybe a couple of things we need to work on, probably scoring more. Um, but, you know, playing with mates it all comes from the style of play and the coaching staff, what they implement into us and um, giving us a little bit of that freedom to go be creative and enjoy ourselves kind of thing, but also, you know, knocking down on the, you know, the tactical side as well, so... Darren, um, in terms of, um, you know, you're the interim coach, um, but this was your opportunity, I guess, to, to stake your claim. How do you think you've gone in the, in the two games? Wow. I mean, I've, I've loved it. I've enjoyed it. And I always said when the opportunity came up that I was going to enjoy it, and, and I have, because how can you not? You know, they're a great set of lads to work with. We've got great staff, so I get a lot of support around us. Um, and it's something, like I've sort of said, it's something I've been involved in for eight, eight nine years. Um, so it's not coming into something new. Um, so I've, I felt like it's been seamless transition into the role, uh, but massively supported by the staff and the players. Um, and, it, and it's been a great week. You know, we've we've had we've had a great week. Yeah. Yeah. Could you do Germ again? Because um, under twenty World Cup was right before that. Is there a possibility we'd like to have that shot to yeah. come up against Ivan Hamzic? Yeah. I applied for the role. I interviewed for the role. Um, and. I'm still in the mix for the role, um, and now it will go to whoever to make some decisions of what happens next. But is that scheduling possible for that one person to do both roles? We, we can make anything possible. <laughs> can I ask, um, you now about the coaching situation, I want to ask you to comment on Darren because it's not fair and you're not going anywhere. Step away. <laughs> <laughs> but, but how do you guys feel about this sort of like long interim period? Do you feel like it's sort of wasted time, or do you think they should pick somebody and get on with it for the next World Cup cycle? Or are you happy? to wait till you get the right person? Or what, what's the player's perspective on that? The players don't really look at it in that way. Well, regardless of the coach, the players here, they, they're going to work hard for the coach. Um, you know, Darren, sorry, we call him Baze, but um, Baze has come in and, you know, um, you know, we're all, you know, we've known him for a while and we get along well with him. You know, we've got a good relationship with him and the players are here to work at the end of the day. They're not here to decide the coaching um, situation. So regardless of the coach, um, you know, we're all going to work and we've enjoyed it this week. It's been very good under, under Bayes and, um, you know, the trainings, just the, the load um, going into games, the general um, things at the hotel and all that stuff, you know, players um, enjoy and are happy and, yeah. So you'd be fine if you go to the next window and still in the situation? Like that's not going to be anything that's huge for the funding 
I don't think at all. Um, yeah, to be honest, I think if it's an interim coach or a, you know the men's head coach leading up to the 2026 World Cup, um, won't change how the players look at it. Um, they're here to work and it's a professional environment. So um, regardless of the coaching situa uh, situation, we're all gonna, you know, be there to work hard and, and not, you know, take it as a just another tour. Yeah, and so and your dad, he's a really big believer of sort of to follow your football. I imagine does that mean he wasn't here to, to watch a score score in Wellington, or has he made it back? Yeah, nah, he he was actually in France. Um, Mum and dad have moved over to France, so um, you know, quite gutted they weren't here to come out. Um, you know, hey, obviously I had a bit of other family here, um, and all his friends and my friends and whatnot, so they kept in touch with him and he definitely watched the game back home even if it was 3 a.m. in the morning 4 a.m. in the morning um, they've obviously you know mum and dad they've always supported me always came to the games um, even my brother he's, he's what you'll be watching at 4 a.m. so yeah your dad's messaged me already so yeah, he's definitely, <laughs> he's definitely watching um, yeah. can I just ask you about Joe Bell we'll yeah. just get some band today he, he's really only played about the same number of games you have Matt you know it's not like he's an experienced campaigner but internally what is his influence on this side you know, Joe's a guy that um, will look out for everyone kind of thing. Um, you know, he'll more show his leadership through his actions on the pitch. He's not, he's vocal, but he's not like a, your traditional vocal captain, you know. Um, he'll do the little things behind the scenes for the players that they don't know about to make it better for everyone kind of thing. Um, so Joe being captain today, I thought he was great on the pitch and he showed it in a way where he was all over the park. Um, just shown by example kind of thing. So um, I thought he did an excellent job today. And provided with decent assists. So. Yeah, decent board, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah.